In this video, I'm going to go over the plugins that I use as of today in Obsidian. First, let me open the settings and I'm going to show you where the plugins are. I'm going to press command comma, brings me to the settings page. Here you can see the core plugins and the community plugins, core plugins. There's just a few I think that I have disabled. I think they come disabled by default, but you can see here. Now, what I'm going to discuss today are the community plugins. How do you get these plugins? You can come here to browse. I'm going to show you the ones that I have installed only. Not all of these are enabled, like this one, for example. And here you can see the author names and the rest of them are down here. Here in the community plugins page is where you enable or disable them. So notice that I have all of them here installed. These two are disabled. This is disabled as well. And this is also disabled, but they're installed. You can uninstall them if you click on this trash can here. And here on the left hand side, if you scroll down, you will be able to see the community plugins. Let me show you what each one of these does and how I configure them. I'm just going to follow the order that you see here. So first, advanced tables. Let me show you what this does. The plugin currently has an issue. I'm not sure why tables are not working in live view. So if you switch to source mode, when you need to type a table, it's going to work fine. You just need to type the pipe symbol and type some text, column one. Then you press tab and it's automatically going to create another column for you. I typed column two. I press tab again, column three, press tab again, column four. I press tab, I press enter. It's going to take me down so I can start entering data. I'm going to fill this up with row one under each column. And I just have to press tab to go to the next column as well. If I press enter here, it's going to take me down to the next row. And I can also enter data here. Let me switch back to live view just gonna click here again. I'm not sure why the plugin has an extra column here. There's an issue going on with live view. So let's just wait for the maintainer to update it. Or otherwise you can just use the source mode the way that I showed here. The next plugin on the list is attachment management. What this allows me to do is to set the directory where the attachments are going to be stored. Notice that the path, which is the folder where they're gonna be stored, has the name of the note and at the end it has dash img. Creating this directory with the same name of the note is not something that Obsidian supports as of yet. So that's why I had to add this. And here's the name of the file. It's just gonna have img dash and the date. Here you can see the date format. You can configure it to your liking. And here are some other options. Let me show you how this works. Let me go to the directory where this note is stored. I'm gonna click there. Here is the note, June 21st, Friday. There is no folder right now called June 21st Friday. So I'm going to take a screenshot and it's going to create a folder and store the screenshot in there. OK, so I'm going to paste it here. Notice that the directory was created and the image is here inside that directory and has the name of the note and it ends with dash IMG. I don't like keeping all the images in the same directory because then it's really confusing and it's really difficult to know to what file an image belongs. So this just helps me keep the images more organized. You can open the file in a new tab and it's there. Moving on to the next plugin on the list, we have the calendar where you can configure some options. The week starts on Monday. Show the week number if you want to. Here at the bottom, there's some other options as well. The weekly note template. I have that configured here. If I go to daily notes, Here's where I specify where the template for the daily note is. Let me show you how this calendar plugin works. You can find it here. I'm just going to click on it and it allows me to go to my daily note for each one of these days. Notice that right now I'm June 21st. That is today. Let me go to yesterday. Just going to open a new tab and do it there. I went yesterday. This is my note from yesterday, the 19th. I didn't have anything. If I go to Saturday, which is tomorrow, it's going to ask me. I click create. It creates it and it uses the template that I defined in the daily note templates, which shows me the tasks that I have pending. Okay, so that's the calendar plugin. Useful if you want to navigate between your daily notes and see them in this view. Moving on to the next plugin, I have Excalidraw, which allows you to add drawings to your notes. Here are the basic settings. Notice that when embedding a drawing to the active document, I use the attachment folder in the Obsidian settings. I have that here. That's why I set that up. Let me go down here. What else did I change? These are defaults. Saving under file name. Here's where I changed some other things. You can see a preview. In case you change something here, you can see it up here. When I embed a drawing, this is the name that is going to get. Or if it's just a new drawing, this is the name that is going to get. And you set that up here. These are all the options. Besides these, I didn't change anything else. Let me show you how this works real quick. I'm going to go to my today's file. I'm going to go to the bottom of it. And here 
going to add a new section, Excalibur draw. Notice that to add this markdown heading, I added a snippet. I just came here to my snippets in Raycast. This is the snippet that I used. It dynamically adds the date and it jumps my cursor to this section. If you want to learn more about how I do that, I have a video. You will be able to find it on the top right corner. So if I bring up the command palette here, which is command P, I'm going to look for Xcali draw. I'm going to go up in here, create a new drawing in a pop out window and embed it into active document. I have a shortcut, which is command shift D. I'm going to press enter here. Notice that it created a new window. I'm going to draw something here just for testing. I'm going to hit the number seven just for this pencil. Just drew something with my mouse and I hit the number eight. Test. You can type stuff. You can make it bigger. You can change the color. You can add shapes. There's a lot of different things you can do with this tool. It's really amazing. You will be able to see this file at the very bottom. Notice that it's embedded there because that's the option that I selected. And where is this file? Because of the way that I have it configured, we should be able to see the file right here. It has the same name of the note but it ends in that Xcali draw. You don't need to use this plugin. You can use the tool directly on your browser. I'm just going to open the bookmark. I have it here. Xcali draw takes me to the website. You can do the same thing here. The only difference is that you would have to download the file here. While on the other hand, in Obsidian, you can have this file directly in your note. So moving on to the next plugin, Git. This is one of my favorite ones. If you notice on the top right corner, there's a message that has been showing up that it has been pushing files to GitHub. Everything is up to date. That was the pull message. And this is the commit message. Notice that it pushed four files to remote. So what this means is that I have a GitHub repository in which my notes are uploaded. So every time that I make a change, two minutes after, this plugin is going to automatically create a git commit and push the changes for me. Here at the bottom, you can configure some settings like the auto commit message. You can specify it here for a manual commit. Here's the message. This is the date placeholder that you see here where you can specify the date. If I click here on preview, I'll be able to see it on the top right corner. This is the way that it looks like. Let me go down here so you can see the rest of the settings. The rest of these are just defaults. I don't remember what I changed. I think I left everything in the default settings. You can specify the name here and the email. Let me show this to you in GitHub real quick. I'm going to open my Obsidian repo. So I'm just going to the repo here. This is private. You will not be able to see it, but notice that it was updated one minute ago. And this is great because if you need to roll back to a previous version of your notes, you can do so. My text editor of choice is NeoVim. Let me go there real quick and I'm going to show you. This is my Obsidian repo. This is the same that I'm looking at in Obsidian. Let me just fix this file. Just going to remove this part. And if, for example, I want to see all the commits in NeoVim, I use lazy git. So I just press space GG it shows me all the commits that have been done, as you can see here. And I can just revert back to any commit that I want. These changes are pending as of now, so I can push them from here if I want to. But this is not what the video is about. Let me go back to Obsidian so we can move on to the next plugin. The next option that we have here is image toolkit. This just allows you to view the images. You can zoom in, zoom out and do other things to images. Here are all the settings. I think I didn't change any of them, but let me scroll down so you can see them. These are all defaults. If I click on this image, notice that it opens it in a bigger screen. I can zoom in, zoom out, and there's some other things that you can do here. Moving on to the next plugin, style settings. This is what allows me to change the look of Obsidian, the color that you see here and everything else are settings that I changed here. If I go to export, here are the different settings. Notice that here are the heading colors and sizes. Heading one, it's size. Heading two, it's color and it's size. Heading three, heading four, five. And I have some other settings here that I configured on the plugin. You don't need to enter this code here. You could, if you get this code, you can copy and paste. But otherwise, you come here to each one of them and modify everything to your liking. There's a lot of stuff that you can change. Notice that this is the border color. I'm gonna change it to something else. Let me switch it to this, for example. I'm gonna hit save. Changes everything. Okay, so I'm back to my back to my settings. The theme that I'm using that works with this, you can find it under appearance here on the left hand side under themes. And the one that I'm using is minimal. If you want to install a different theme, you can come here to manage. This is the one that I have installed. This is the default theme. 
and here are some other ones in case you want to explore them. But if I remember correctly, this plugin works specifically with the minimal theme. Not exactly sure, you can give it a try. That's the way that I do it. Moving on to the next plugin, this is Tasks. I didn't change any of the defaults here. Let me go over the settings real quick. Nothing was changed. Yeah, these are all just defaults. Let me show you how this works. So this is the section that you see here at the top of the file. Let me add a new task so you can see how that works. I'm going to add a new task on this note. I use a Rayca snippet for that. I'm just going to type to do here and I'm going to enter a to do item here. Take out the trash. This is tomorrow. Specify the date there and that's it. If I want to enter a new one, test one, that's the name that I'm going to give to it. Notice that it gets automatically updated here. How did I add this section? Just added a heading here. Doesn't matter. You don't need to add a heading and then just added this code block. This is part of the plugin. You just need to add this tasks. And here you specify which tasks you want to see. I want to see the ones that are not done. I want to sort them by priority. And the second sorting is by due date. So that's why you can see that this one that has a due date shows at the top of the file. If I add another task here with a priority, it's going to show on the top. Let me add a new one. Test two. I'm going to give it a priority, high priority. It should show at the top. Notice here. So this helps me to keep track of the things that I need to do. I needed to do this video. I did it today so I can mark this as done. Notice that this task is not on this note. This is Friday, but this task is on Thursday, which was yesterday. Let me open that. OK, so it took me to that. And here's where I have these two tasks. I can mark them as done here or I can go back to the Friday note and mark them as done here. So if I click on it here, it's going to mark it as done. It's going to disappear from there. If I go back to that other file Thursday, you'll be able to see that it's marked and it automatically added the date for my note of tomorrow. If I don't complete the tasks, they're going to remain here until I complete them. So if I open tomorrow's note, you'll be able to see the tasks that are not completed there yet. And if I open Sunday's note, it's not created yet. I'm going to create it. And it's also going to show me the tasks that are not completed yet. There's a lot of different settings related to this plugin. You can search in YouTube. Let me do a search real quick. I'm going to search for videos Obsidian tasks. This one, the first one is pretty good. If you want to find out more about tasks, go and watch that one. I used it as a reference and I highly recommend it. OK, so moving on to the next plugin. Let me go back to the options here. We have typewriter scroll. And what this does is to keep my cursor centered at all times. Notice that when I scroll down, my cursor is always in the middle. It's not moving around. So I like using that, but it's up to you. There's another plugin that I have disabled that I use a lot. If you go to community plugins, imager, imager, however it's called, I'm going to enable it. Let me go to the settings. You can go to the settings by coming down here or you can click on this little gear icon. Let me click there. And here you can upload images to Imager using your account, authenticate it, or you can do it anonymously. It's up to you. So what this does is that instead of storing the images locally on your computer, it uploads them. This image, as you saw, is stored locally. It's the one that we have here, here. But I'm going to add another image here right under. Let me go back to my browser. I'm going to take a screenshot of this part. And I'm going to paste it here. Notice that it says uploading file. And now this is a public image. If I copy this URL, come to my browser, paste it. I can see that image there. So that's up to you. I don't upload any sensitive data. I just upload everything that I don't care being out publicly on the Internet. And one of the main reasons that I do that is if I don't want my GitHub repo to be too large in size. There are some files that I have that have a lot of images like university courses, for example. I don't care too much about those files. I don't care if the images get lost. So it's up to you. If you want to have something not locally, use this plugin. Moving on to the next plugin here, VimRC support. This is one of my favorite plugins. It allows me to use Vim motions when navigating in Obsidian. What do I mean by this? Let me exit out of here. The way that I scroll up and down in my file is using K and J. If I want to select something here in the file, I press Shift V to select that line. Or if I want to enter visual mode, I press V. I select it and I can just copy and I can paste that text somewhere else. I can delete if I press DD, I delete the entire line and a lot of other things. So if you're used to Vim or NeoVim, you want to use those motions in here. This plugin is what allows you to do so. How do you configure it? This file is where you have to configure your Vim key bindings. Let me open that file real quick. Let me go to my text editor. Here is my Obsidian repo. This is a file that you need to store at the root directory of your Obsidian Vault. 
this is the root directory this is where the git file is this is where the dot obsidian file is in the same directory you have to create this dot obsidian bmrc file if i open that file you'll be able to see all my key bindings this is not a real file this is just a sim link let me show you this in the terminal so that you can see what i'm talking about i'm gonna open a new tmux pane i'm in the obsidian main directory i'm going to list the files and grab for that specific file so here it is as you can see here this obsidian that bim RC is just a file that is pointing to the original file, which I have in my dot files latest, vimrc, vimrc file. Notice that here it's L for link. It doesn't have to be a sim link. You can just copy and paste your vimrc file into here, and that's going to take care of it as well. Up to you. So those are the plugins that I currently use in Obsidian. There are hundreds, I'm not sure if thousands of plugins. Be careful because you're going to spend months or even years setting Obsidian up. You're going to waste a lot of time. To be honest, it happened to me. I spent like a year setting it up perfectly. And as of now, I don't even use Obsidian that much anymore. I have completely switched over to NeoBIM. That's where I edit all of my text files. And that's where I take all of my notes. So my advice to you is use the tool. It's really great. I really like the Obsidian a lot, but don't spend too much time tweaking it. You don't know if you're going to end up with it or not. If you want to know how I view and paste images in NeoBIM, I have a video for that. You can find that on the top right corner. Let me show that to you real quick before I leave. I'm going to exit out of this pane. I'm going to open a file. Test images. And as you can tell, I have a lot of images on this file. This one is loaded from the internet. This one is stored locally. This other image is stored locally. This one as well. Notice that I store them in different formats. That WebP. I also store them in that AVIF to save a lot of space. I explain everything in that video so you can go and check it out. So that's it for this video. If you liked it, give it a thumbs up. If you found it useful, if you have questions, if you need any assistance, leave a comment down below. If you like the channel, subscribe and I'll see you in the next video.